Hi, I'm Dr. Patrick Donovan. I'm with the dispensaryonline.com. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about vitamin D today. It's a very, very important vitamin. However, there's some error in that nomenclature. Vitamin D is not quite a vitamin. It's really a pro-hormone or a hormone-like substance, and it has multiple benefits in our system. Vitamin D comes primarily from the sun um, and uh, the UV light affecting our skin and changing the chemical in our skin to an active form of vitamin D. Now, um, how valuable is vitamin D? What's it beneficial for? About four real primary functions. One, and certainly the most well-known, is vitamin D's ability to improve the utilization of calcium and getting calcium into the bone to give you stronger, harder uh, bones. Now that's important in preventing osteoporosis and osteopenia. And you women, you certainly want to begin early on with that. You don't want to be dealing with watching your vitamin D levels after you're 50 or 55. You want to start now when you're 20, 30, 40, etc. Um, so you want to pay attention to your D intake and your D levels now, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Second value of vitamin D is it's a very effective anti-cancer agent. In the body, vitamin D plays an important role in regulating the differentiation of cells, meaning that it keeps cells being stomach cells or being skin cells or whatever that cell is, it helps keep that cell that identity. Now, in cancer, when that cell begins to change, it changes and loses that identity and then begins to proliferate, and that's what cancer is about. So vitamin D is very important in keeping cells well differentiated. Thirdly, vitamin D is a very important anti-inflammatory agent in our body. Um, and inflammation is now the, you know, the, the bottom line cause of most diseases, from cancer to autoimmune disease to even aging. And so vitamin D is a very important pro-hormone, a very important molecule in affecting, quieting, and quiescing that inflammatory reaction in our body. Fourthly, we found some very interesting evidence showing that when vitamin D levels begin to sink, this is all over the world, when vitamin D levels begin to sink in the winter months, we see a greater onset of flu and colds, but primarily flu. There is a direct relationship, actually it would be an indirect relationship, that when we see an increase in occurrences of flu, we see a decrease in the levels of vitamin D in the population uh, being affected by that flu virus. Now, like in any um, infective scenario, there are two aspects to it. The virulence of the virus or the infective agent and the susceptibility of the host population. So you can have an agent that's not that virulent but have a host population that is greatly at risk because of markedly decreased vitamin D levels and you can have a horrible flu epidemic. Now, the other thing that we found out is not only are you at risk for getting the flu if those vitamin D levels are low? But in patients who have, or in people who have lower vitamin D levels, they're most likely to suffer the side effects of that flu or the adverse reactions of flu that cause the morbidity and mortality, the death rates to increase with the flu epidemic. So, four very important reasons to have good levels of vitamin D on board. Now, what are good levels? That's the question. Well, from blood levels, you want your levels to be optimally above 50, with 60 being probably the optimal level. Now, the norms are 32 to 100. So if you go to your doctor and you have your vitamin D levels drawn and the doctor says, your levels are normal, you're, they're fine. You want to look at the numbers. Look at the numbers. I've had patients come in here who were told their vitamin D levels were perfectly normal and they were 32.8, 32.5. Man, you're just basically within normal limits. Now, any level below 50 increases your risk for numerous diseases. It isn't until your blood levels are commonly at about 50 or higher 
that you reduce your risks for cardiovascular disease, multiple sclerosis, autoimmune diseases, asthma, uh, and cancers. Uh, so low vitamin D levels put you at risk for all of those diseases. And the optimal levels are going to be above 50, and we shoot in this office and in my practice at 60 being the optimal level. Now, what does all of this mean? This means that you're going to need to work hand in hand with your healthcare professional in diagnosing your vitamin D levels and having them drawn. You want them drawn at least twice a year. In this office, we do we draw folks in September and October going into the dark months and in April and May coming out of the darker months to make sure that their levels are being maintained at optimal levels. How do you maintain those levels? You take oral vitamin D levels or oral vitamin D supplements. What vitamin D, what form, and how much? Vitamin D3 is the best form to take. How much? Anywhere from a thousand IUs, international units, a day to 5,000 international units a day. Now, vitamin D was thought to be toxic 10 years ago, 20 years ago. We know now that these levels are very safe, specifically in people who have low vitamin D levels. So, let me sum it up. A very important pro-hormone, very important in preventing osteoporosis, osteopenia, cancers of many different types, specifically breast cancer, prostate cancer. Very important in reducing your risks to flu and the side effects or death rates to flu. Very important in reducing inflammation in the body. How much should I take? Well, you're going to make that determination based on your blood levels and your personal needs. And those needs will be determined with your healthcare practitioner. And those supplemental doses can be anywhere from 1,000 IUs to 5,000 IUs a day of vitamin D3. So, take your D, be well.